So is the X-Tool F1 Ultra worth over two and a half times more than the original X-Tool F1? And the answer is yes. And you no, know, it really depends on your situation. And from all of my testing, I found there are four big differences between these machines that you really should consider before you decide to purchase. All right, now, before we talk about the comparison, let's talk about what this machine isn't. It's not a machine like the X-Tool S1 that's built for the most part to cut wood. And there's a big reason for that. This guy actually has air assist and this guy does not. Now X-Tool does provide this tray that you can put on the bottom and that lets like all the little pieces that you cut out fall through so you have good airflow underneath. But not having air assist is really the main issue if we're gonna do like thicker stuff like this. This is three millimeter birch plywood. This is pretty much the stock that I use when I test out a machine, whether it is a CO2 machine or a dye machine, especially when you're cutting. And you can see in the test right now, uh, obviously I could cut it out but you're just getting to the limit to where there's going to be a flame. And normally with air assist, that's what's helping put that flame out and keeping your cut really clean. Now that's not to say you can't cut with this. Obviously if you're using thinner material, especially some really thin metal, but just know if you want to do stuff like this, steer away from this type of machine, look at the X-Tool S1 or look at the X-Tool P2 or all of the other machines that I've talked about in the past that may not even be X-Tool. All right, with that out of the way, Let's talk about what this is excellent at, and that is primarily engraving. Just like with the original F1, this is an awesome engraving machine. And one of my favorite things to engrave to test out are always these black aluminum cards. Uh, they do a really good job when you do like a reverse image. And this DPI, I cranked up to 800. You could go even higher with machines like this, um, but it's doing an incredible job. Now, both these machines will give you an awesome engraving result, but this one's going to do it much, much quicker, especially in the business context of throughput, AKA like how much batch stuff can I do quickly so that I can sell? Because as we talk about these four key differences, that's what I want you to keep in mind because this is set up for a business use case and those four factors all play into it. And the first one of those four factors has to do with what is coming out like right there on the F1 and right there on the Ultra. And that is the power of the laser itself. And a pretty unique feature to X-Tool in their F line is the fact that you actually have two different power sources. So you have a more traditional diode laser that you would find in something like the X-Tool S1. And that's gonna be 10 watts on the F1. I don't know why I keep putting this down. 10 watts on the F1 and then 20 watts on the F1 Ultra. But then you also have a fiber laser and that's what opens you up to do a lot of metal stuff. In this case, it's going to be two watts on this guy, but it's gonna be 20 watts on this guy. Now, because it's more powerful, that means you can run it faster, but because it's more powerful, that also means you can go deeper into materials. I don't have this completely dialed in, uh, but there have been a lot of images online on doing like embossed engravings on metal. Specifically, these are brass coins. Uh, and you can see a few time lapses of me doing these. Now, these take a while. The software basically takes a grayscale image, converts it to a depth map, then turns that into 256 layers. So in like a 3D printer, which slowly builds up the layers by putting in material, this is doing the same thing, just taking those slowly away. Now, each layer only takes a few seconds, but they definitely add up. So some of the ones you're seeing now would range anywhere from 30 minutes all the way up to an hour and a half. But having increased power definitely opens you up to doing stuff like this that you just couldn't do before, especially on the lower powered F1. Now, in addition to brass, I also did a good bit of aluminum testing. Uh, and this is actually pretty hard to show on camera just because it is so reflective. And one big thing about aluminum and having higher power means you can get different types of color inside of aluminum. So in my test, I could get a little bit of a bluish color, a white, as well as a black. What was fun to test out is, so instead of just doing like a picture engrave, like I did over here of Spider-Man that is just white, you could actually do a two layer engrave. You could do a white pass, then invert the image, and then do a black pass. And this is actually the first time I've played around doing it. But you can see the result is really cool because you can look at it from two different angles and you're kind of getting two different shades. Um, or if you're just looking at it straight on, the whites pop a little bit more and then you have the darks in there as well. And then again, with the two watt laser, you really couldn't get the darker engraves unless you ran it at a super, super slow speed. So it's really nice you can do that with the 20 watt fiber. And one last really nice example of what you can do with a more powerful laser is when we start talking about these like slate coasters. And just like we were doing with the coin, if we do those emboss engraved, you actually get a really, really deep engraved. You can see this eagle especially goes down a good bit. And I plan to do some follow-up videos on embossment in general because that's just a whole other topic. But just know, again, increased power, 
opens you up to doing different types of stuff versus just straight marking on material. All right, the second key difference between these two machines is the overall speed that they can run. So with this one, we're talking about 4,000 millimeters per second, which is much faster than what a traditional diode or CO2 machine can do. But this guy is 10,000 millimeters per second. And this is an actual working speed. And I did run some tests to see if I could get some marking and I got just a little bit at full power at 10,000. But having that top end definitely opens you up in terms of just what you can do with the machine. And especially if you're comparing this to a CO2 or a diode machine, which sometimes will max out around the thousand millimeters per second range. Um, they just work entirely different. So the diode is actually moving physically around the work bed. So your speed is often limited by just like how fast you can move that thing around versus this, which is using a galvanometer, which is just a mirror inside the lens that is on like a little gimbal that moves around super quick that allows it to redirect the beam and always the best example of this other than just showing you like real-time engravings which you have been seeing is on the preview side so a lot of times you'll get a red dot preview to where it will do a quick outline around whatever your artwork or whatever is going to be um, in this case it can do that so I can do a framing operation which I am running right now I'm trying to see how well this is going to show up on camera let's do that that's even easier for it to see hopefully so I have that rectangle going quickly around my text but a nice thing you can do as well is you can actually set it to outline I'm going to frame it again but the top end on just the square framing for this machine is 24,000 millimeters per second. Then it's going to be 16,000 on the outline of whatever your artwork is. And that's an excellent way to do alignment with your machine to the material that you want to use. And then as always with any type of laser, power and speed uh, is pretty linked. So even if you could crank up the F1 to 10,000 millimeters per second, especially if you're using the fiber two watt laser, uh, it's really not gonna do much because you just don't have enough power to do it. But when you pair it with the 20 watts, you can actually get some usable results with it. All right, the third key difference between these two machines that might help justify the over two and a half times cost difference is the overall size between these machines. I am going to erase this up uh, with this nice included touchpad right here. Because other than just putting them side by side, this is probably the most dramatic way to show how much different they are in terms of your overall size. So the original F1 fits completely inside the F1 Ultra. In terms of numbers, this is 115 by 115 millimeters, while this is 220 by 220 millimeters on the usable work surface. But the overall height on this machine is much higher, so you can get thicker material in there and there is one key accessory we're gonna talk about here in a minute that also opens you up to be able to use it, uh, which would be pretty impossible to do on something like this. And then the size really plays into the throughput because you can just fit a lot more stuff inside the work bed itself. Whether you're doing like a bunch of business cards or jewelry or just small items, you can put all of this in here and then run all of that at once. And then especially when you combine it with the speed and the power, the price difference might make sense for your situation just because you could turn out more products and you can make more money. Now the fourth key difference between these two is this one has something that only the Xtool P2 has and that is an integrated camera. So this guy does not have a camera. You focus it by lining up two dots. Um, you can do the same thing with this one as well. But inside of the Xtool software, you can use the camera to help focus the machine, which I believe is more or less the same process they're doing with the Xtool P2. And then the camera definitely can help you out with positioning because you can get an image of your work bed. And I found this actually pretty accurate. So I was able to do those brass coins right up to the edge and it's pretty much right on what I wanted it to be. But in terms of the business aspect and the price difference between these two, having a camera does one key feature that I need an accessory to show you the real benefit of and that is this guy which I have never seen a laser before. I'm not going to completely attach it but this is a conveyor belt. So you can put material on here, it can process it, move more material over, process it, and keep on going. But if you didn't have a camera, there's no like easy way to do alignment on this itself. Whereas on the work bed, you have this like corner bracket so you can lock in your material into different places. But as soon as this conveyor belt moves, you would be out of luck. 
And that is where the integration into the software that Xtool has come a long way over the past few years comes into play because they're pulling over a feature from the P2 where you could put in a bunch of material that was the exact same size. So in my case, I was doing those black business cards again. Using the camera, you can put your artwork on one of those and then it can process where all of the other business cards are and then basically copy and paste the artwork onto those. What's cool about it is it also takes into account the positionings. So even if things aren't perfectly oriented, it will actually spin around the artwork. I need to do a lot more testing to see like how dialed in it is. I've seen some examples of folks where it's pretty off. In my case, it was actually pretty close for the most part. Now you can do that without the conveyor belt itself. The camera lets you do that. But with the conveyor belt, it basically can do that indefinitely. So you'll set up the process once, then it'll engrave every business card it can reach and then it will move the conveyor belt over, scan it, do all the positioning and run it again. But in terms of the user side of things, you only have to hit this button once and then it can run more or less indefinitely. And you can actually see in this test video, I was putting on cars while it was running. Probably wouldn't recommend that on the safety side because you can see my hand gets pretty close to the laser a few times. So it'd be good if I actually kept this down further, but it's gonna pretty much keep going as long as it's detecting material. So I could totally see someone putting a box on one side to catch all your material and then just dropping on more pieces and letting it run. That is pretty awesome in terms of production. And normally when people ask me about cameras, I'll say they're nice, but they're not like required because you can still do all the positioning with like the red dot rectangle or outline on a fiber laser or CO2 laser. But when you tie it into the software and the software can do positioning based off the visuals it sees, that's pretty crazy. So even if you don't use the conveyor belt, which is an accessory that costs, I think like 500 bucks, so not cheap whatsoever, you still get the camera with this machine that you don't get with this. That gives you all the focusing and positioning that this one does not. And then a few other things that really don't fit into those four big differences categories. Just the overall build, the packaging, just how well this was thought out. I was super impressed by when I pulled this out of the box, especially compared to where they have come from, from the original Xtool D1. Xtool has come leaps and bounds in terms of how much thought is put into a machine like this. Even having this like color touchpad where you can run files directly from the machine itself. We can raise, where you can lower, you can run the uh, framing operation, which I have something in there right now. And then you can pull up recent things that you've run or files on a USB stick that you already have connected to the machine. I found the exhaust on this works very well. Um, so you can see some of my brass dust is already back here. But even when I didn't have this connected to like an external extractor, in my case, I actually am using Xtools extractor, which does a great job. But just the fan right here was enough to get the fumes out. And then you could duct it out a window or a door if you needed to. On the safety side, this is probably the biggest thing, especially with the diode laser. When this is closed, this is going to protect your eyes from the light. But as you saw earlier, when I probably got a little too close with my hands when I was running the fiber operation. You can also drop this down to make sure people aren't getting too close to the machine itself. From the best that I can tell, this does not have a switch, meaning that you can have this open or shut and the machine is going to run regardless. That would be a nice option to have in the future and maybe you could toggle it on and off because when you have like bigger material or even like the conveyor belt, you obviously can't push it down the entire way. You've got the emergency stop on the side that does a good job. Now, the one area that this guy does beat this guy is the size in terms of portability. I've seen a lot of people will take these, especially to craft shows, and they'll do custom engraving like on site. And this is a great machine for that because more than likely you're gonna be doing smaller stuff and you're doing like one-offs. So the speed difference is not gonna be as big of a deal. And this also opens you up to being able to drop this directly onto the material itself because this plate is removable versus this guy, which is not a removable plate. Now you can also work with material that is bigger than the machine itself by using the conveyor belt. So not doing like a batch engrave, but it can take the material through the machine and do the engraving as it goes. That's something they kind of have with the P2 with their conveyor belt system. But I like how this one is because it's way easier to do the alignment and get everything set up to go. Now for my overall recommendation for this machine, this is very, very well thought out, especially how they have integrated into their software. Whether it's worth buying over this, that's where I encourage you guys to run some like sample numbers in terms of how much the power, the speed, the size, even like the conveyor belt can save you in terms of time where it could make sense in your business. And if you decide that it does, a lot of times I'll have some type of discount with Xtool and there'll be a link down below for you to check out. All right, until next time, go make or break something in your shop. See you guys.